Okay, so today we're here to um, have a little look at getting started with Aftershoot. Um, so I'm here with um, Bob Coates. So tell us a little bit about what you've been up to, Bob. Sure, I'm a commercial photographer. Uh, I call myself a lens-based artist, uh, and I'm based in Sedona, Arizona. Um, and I have the um, opportunity to um, play with this new software, and I use it in a totally different way. I don't, I mean, I've got people stuff and I've got some things to share with you, but I, I've started pushing this onto my uh, wildlife stuff as well. So it was like, oh, will this work with my birds? And apparently it does. So I've got some, some things to share today from shooting live in entertainment, uh, live on stage entertainment, and uh, some of my wildlife stuff. Cool. So I'm also, an, my... while you're working on that, I'm also an author for Photo Focus and Professional Photographer and many other magazines and um, throughout the place. Oh, there's Julie. Hey. <laughs> for those who don't know me, my name's Julie Powell and I'm a photographer, a writer, an educator, and I'm based in Melbourne, Australia. Um, and I've actually just come back from a road trip to Outback South Australia. So um, I, of course, had hundreds of photos to cull. So thank goodness for Aftershoot. Um, I've been using it for a few months now, and I honestly don't know where I would be without it. Um, and not just for, for people too. So um, we did a heap of landscape stuff while we were away. Um, so it was really interesting running it through that. So, um, but generally speaking, I am a portrait photographer. Um, so I do use Aftershoot a lot for photos of people. I can't so, wait to see what you got through uh, through the landscape because I haven't pushed that button yet. But I'm I'm looking at it because that's you know landscape, wildlife, um, and yep. uh, nature stuff yep. is where I'm at now these days. So yeah, well we had a little bit of everything while we we're away. It was really really good. So why after shoot? Well, it's the fastest, easiest way I know of to cull your photos before importing them into your editing software. Um, and I'm pretty much guessing that culling was never really your favorite part of the job either, Bob. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> um, if I had this when I had when I was doing weddings, I might still be doing weddings. No, that's not true, but. <laughs> Um, I know I spent many, many an hour going, oh, which, you know, do I want this one or that one? Do I want, are their eyes closed or that, you know, just spending all that time. It's, it's just, it's just huge. It's soul crushing, isn't it? <laughs> can can I, be. Yeah. It, um, yeah, no, culling is never, ever going to be anybody's favorite part of any shoot. I think it doesn't matter what you shoot either. So, um, so that's where that um, Aftershoot really is a great way for photographers and creatives to be able to spend more time on things that are important to you. So, oh, uh, like Margarita, this? anyone? Shooting? <laughs> Seriously, if you want to take back some of your time, um, it's just set and forget. Um, how much time do you reckon you've managed to get back in your life, Bob? Um, according to Aftershoot, they told me they've saved me at least a day so far. That's, tw cool. that's 20, 24 hour, uh, maybe a 26 hour day. I'll have to look because they, um, on my, my thing, it keeps a track for you. Yeah, it kind of says, does. Hey, we've called 7,000 images and, uh, we picked 1000 of those 7,000 for you. And so it's, 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 uh, been pretty interesting to see. I didn't realize how much time I actually spent bouncing back and forth between the images. And this really speeds things up. And it's really interesting. I'm not what I would consider a high volume shooter um, because I do a lot of stuff in the port in the studio um, I'm not going out and shooting you know thousands and thousands of photos um, like when we're out traveling um, so but I'm still still saving so much time just getting in and getting it done so it's been really good so, um, like I said, culling is often taking time and the most creative non or non-creative part of photography workflow, um, and hence why the people at Aftershoot built it um, to help you get precious hours of your life back. And it's not just for portraits and weddings, um, but if it does have people in it, events, live music, anything like that, it's absolutely 
fabulous but it can be used on just about anything um, and Bob like you were saying you don't really photograph people so much so you've been running mostly what well I've been doing I, I do a lot of uh, live inter live stage entertainment yep and, and you find I, it works I really ran good for that. I ran some through there and I want to show you it's really bizarre because a lot of times you have to look for you know same things that you're gonna look for in in weddings and stuff are the eyes closed? Is there a smile on the face? Is this the happiest photo in the group? Um, and and it's very bizarre, but I found out that even through shaded glasses, because I did some extra culling today on, on some older files that I was like, hey, I wonder what would happen if I had, had this then. Oh my goodness, it's so cool. I'll show you a little bit later. Cool, looking forward to it. Okay, so a question that a lot of people do ask is will aftershoot reject my important images never it brings everything in in your folder and we'll show you this in a minute and it rates everything and it saves all your images into different folders and you can go and adjust them re-rate you can even recall your images at any time but it never deletes or rejects any of the photos you bring in it just puts them in a folder on its own for the ones that it thinks aren't really the cream of the crop. Okay, what I found is it's basically, if you think of it as a pre-sorting of your images. Totally. And it's, a, it's, but it's not, it doesn't, you're like you say, it doesn't throw anything away. It makes a folder here for this. It makes a folder here for that. We'll show you how all those folders work in just a little bit. Uh, Fran just popped into the uh, chat there and said she likes that it figures you know, to, that it can figure out which image is the cleanest and most in focus. Because, you know, oh. obviously when you're, especially when you're culling on a laptop, it can be a little yeah. hard to tell. So, um, and whenever Aftershoot detects more than one similar image, it picks out the best one from that. So if you're shooting on burst mode or something like that, or you're, you're shooting, you know, a group of family portraits or something like that, um, it groups them together it still picks the, the best image um but it groups them together but it that ensures you the opportunity of miss, never missing out the other thing i found which was really cool that bracketing images and even some panoramas were being grouped together oh so my ai is getting adaptive so i found that to be pretty cool not every time um, but I did find that it was grouping some of them together. So that was really interesting. I know that that after shoot, they're working on a lot of things. They're constantly improving some things. Oh. I ran into a little hitch in my giddy up this week when I was getting ready for this program. I'm like, oh, okay, let me try this. And I thought, oh, this doesn't, I put a little message in the chat to him and said, hey, I've got this little problem over here. Within three minutes, I had a response in there and they were already working on getting it fixed. These guys are like super responsive and really care about making this software like super responsive and working for all of us. Yeah, no, it's terrific. And it works on different software, different platforms, different image formats. Um, if Aftershoot's compatible with, you know, Windows and Mac, apparently including the new M1 chip, which I'm not really a Mac user, but apparently everyone's raving about this thing. So um, it works with both. Um, and of course it supports Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, Capture One, and other leading photography tools. But not everybody uses Lightroom or Capture One. And I know Bob, for instance, you don't use <laughs> Lightroom, do you? That would mean, no, I just can't. I, I, it's, you know, old dogs and new tricks. And I gotta <laughs> tell you, um, I grew up with Bridge and Bridge has gotten so good it's gone along and adobe camera raw um, does the processing it's got the same engine as lightroom um, but to me it's more powerful because it goes direct to photoshop and i spend more time in photoshop because i'm doing artwork and finishing files and and i don't have to like run over to lightroom and then run back out and run back in um, and i've already got my folder structure set up so 
So I don't, I don't personally, I've not needed Lightroom, but I know a lot of people do use it. And that's why you're here because you're a Lightroom <laughs> user. I am a Lightroom user. I am totally. But um, yeah, I mean, that's the beauty of, of Aftershoot. It doesn't really matter. So if, um, and I'm sure Bob will, will give us a quick run through on how he sets it up. But if you are using Lightroom or Capture One, you can um, export straight into that. But if you're not, it doesn't matter. So they've got you covered there as well. Um, as far as image formats go, um, RAW, JPEGs, PNGs, um, pretty much most of your, your standard images, um, it will work with those um, and bring it in. So it's, um, it's pretty easy to use. Well, um, one, other, one other thing that I've been doing is I've been running it through some of my older files to review them and go back in and I've actually had a chance to do stuff. So I'm working with folders, files that have already been put into folders on my computer and I don't have to take them out. It just runs through it and gives me, gives me that ability to, to see what happens from the past. And I'm like, yeah, baby. Cool. So I guess we'll get to the, the, the hard question. How much does it cost? Uh, we'll cover this off first and then, um, then we'll get into something a little more fun. Hey, um, but it's not working. There we go. So how much is after shoot? Well, free for the essentials packet. Um, so that's pretty cool. And that gives you free manual culling, um, the AI filters for closed eyes, blurred photos. Um, you can key in faces and zoom in on that and we'll show you that. Um, one click support for Lightroom Capture One. Their priority support, which is awesome as Bob and I have both been telling you about it and regular updates and they are these guys are on top of it but if you want to switch over to the pro um which is what i'm running that gives you the fully automated ai culling which is awesome um the quick filters for selection sneak peeks and all the rest of it um the ability to um, view duplicates and key faces um but of course you still get the support and the regular updates and the export and all the rest of it so it is pretty awesome. Now, I didn't double check, so hopefully I'm not in trouble here. Um, but we did have a promo code last time, so I'm hoping that our magical unicorns can um, put up the deal for this. Um, there's a link that they will put up in the chat for us. Um, if not, I can probably put it up from here. Um, so if you want to jump over and grab the pro, that will give you um, a code there. So that should hopefully be... And there it is. It's already in the chat. We have magical unicorns here at Photo Focus too. And they're Thanks, wonderful. Hillary. <laughs> um, so yeah, so if you do want to grab yourself um, that deal, go for it. So that's pretty much it um for the slide deck so um i'll just stop sharing for a second and we'll get into some of the nitty-gritty stuff so bob if you want to um sure let me go let me go take a peek there uh, let's go with uh, this screen over here we'll share that there we go um so this is the basic layout for after shoot and let me move this over to another screen so you don't need to see me and Julie on my screen as well. So um, here it is. So they've uh, so it's 7,000 that have been called. I mean, I haven't pushed this yet, but I'm starting to push it more and more, especially as I finish some of my traveling. And now that I hear that uh, it's going to do some good stuff for landscapes as well. But um, it's picked only 2,000 of the 7,000 that were, were uh, viewed. Um, it comes through, gives you uh, new updates. Uh, this is a place to poke around, and if you want to earn some credits towards your, you know, towards your towards your money there, you can invite your friends to come play, and that will get you some discounts. Um, so, just to to show you, so here's you know the basic layout. These are all albums that I have called um, along the way so far, and basically these are basic folders of images. So let's go ahead and do a new one. So we'll start right from, from scratch there, and I'm going to hit New Album. When you get New Album, you get your thing there. Now, one of the things that's really nice here is they have a Tutorials button up here in the top right-hand corner. 
They have us where you can set up your preferences. Um, and basic, if you look here, after shoot is learning your style. So it becomes as you make changes and you say yay or nay, then um, after shoot looks there. And if you leave this checked, then your software will become more apparent, you know, more tied into your choices. So if you don't want to share your stuff up there, you can just uh, click that. No, I'll help improve after shoot. So basically, they can have a you know have a peek. At it. They're not taking any images. They're not showing them anywhere. They're just looking for information. So that helps them out there. So when you want to get started, you go over here and you say, I want to add a folder of images. Or if you're coming in from your SD card or wherever you have your images stored to begin with, you'll go to there. Uh, let's see. Ooh. Um, let me get out of, let me move this down a little bit. There we go. Sedona Wetlands Dragonfly. No, nah, we don't want to do that. Um, so go back here, Art Files. Uh, let's go to Sound Bites. So you can see I have my files all set up in, in a basic um, folder system for, for, for example, Sound Bites is a, is a really big client. And obviously I've shot like, you know, hundreds of shoots for them. And I'm going to go back into this one here. Where is he? Presley, John Presley. Okay. So if you see right here, it's got all these images all set up there. All I have to do is set import from this folder and boom, it just pulls all the images into there and gets them set up. And when it's I look at them here, quick when it brings them in. Yeah, it yeah, it does. It's and it, amazing. It's, it's it's got it all set there. And then what you do is that once you say start culling, you go to here and then you have the choice of fine tuning your choices. So it kind of gives you a little picture of eh, if you don't really care about culling the blurred photos and you re or you really want to do it or if you want to be really strict about it, you have the choice. Um, and I usually end up at moderate for that. Uh, grouping your duplicates. I want as many duplicates put together as, as I can, but I don't go to the extreme yet. Um, and again, these are things that you'll feel as you see the results as they come in. Uh, the selections in your duplicate set. I've got less here. Let's go with more because I want to change that. Um, and then the highlights is it kind of looks through and through knowing what looks good on Instagram and in social media, it kind of picks out the really cool images for you. And it's really pretty interesting that that works out. Then down here, you have an advanced little neighborhood where you have closed eye detection, blur detection, and duplicate detection. So um, I leave all those checked for this particular one. If I'm doing uh, my birds and stuff, I uh, probably won't do closed eye detection, although I don't know if it matters one way or the other. If it doesn't see eyes, it can't do anything about it anyway. So um, so then once you've got it in there, and watch out for this little button here. If you're going into files that you've already done stars for, or you've done work with, you don't necessarily want to overwrite your existing stars and stuff. Um, you'll want to either uncheck that or check that. For me, it doesn't matter because I'm not a star system guy, except for the ones that have been done by here. You also have the ability to set up your own color and star system um, for how you want it to work. So I'm just going to say next, and I'm going to say, go ahead and start culling. So there it goes. It's rolling it out there. And, and you can see this is the that has three steps and the first step it, it gives you keeps you pretty well informed as you're going along and i i almost you know the nice part about this is if you have like a 4000 image wedding you can turn this little bad boy on head out for a cup of coffee an environmental break walk around the block whatever you do um, and if you monitor your email it will send you an email and said hey bob guess what? We're done with this stuff. Um, and now you can go. So it's now they have their magical unicorns, which they, you know, it's, I like a company with a little bit of a sense of humor. And there it is. So out of 110 images, it picked 42. It did this in just under a minute. It always seems longer when you're doing 
<laughs> when you're doing <laughs> webinars, that was like, come on, come on, come on. But that really happened very quickly. So it's looking at this first image here. And it's, uh, you see this little plus two up here that says, you know what, we got a duplicate in there. So it's got two that are side by side. If you double click on it, you get to see it big. And look, you get to see in close that it had two other images to go with it. Um, and then we just go back there and you can work your way through the images this way. You can double click on there and then just use your arrow keys. And if you look, see, so before there was only a single image that fit there. When I went to the next one, it said, oh, you know what? We got some more that are possibles in there. So they put them up here. And if you look at this, look at the closed eye and let's go back because that's what it was doing. Let's go closed eyes. And I was very interested to see this because I didn't think that um, on an image like this with a guy who's on stage with dark glasses, look, it looked inside and saw that his eyes were closed. That's you know how cool. much time that alone saves me? I mean, it was like, okay, yeah, I like his position and stuff, but oh, and then you, you, I mean, I've done this many times when I've been working on images and I'm like, oh yeah, I really like this one. And then I get, you know, get in deeper and go, oh man, his eyes are closed. But look yeah. at that. That's pretty amazing to me. That's cool. Okay. So. So that gives you an idea. Here's our blurred ones. And when I go in and look, and you can you can see, look at how much more noise and how blurry it is in there. Yeah. Um, it definitely um, was right. And from a distance, that looks okay. But when you get in close, oh man, it's it's blurred. So these are images that I don't have to, oh, I don't have to look at, but I can if I want. So you can yeah. kind of confirm after a while. And once you get a little more uh, comfortable with the whole system, then you'll start, you know, saving all that more time because you don't even have to go back and looking. You can trust it if you've got what you need. Um, the one other thing I wanted to show you on this call was the highlights. Remember I told you about that? When you look there, if you look through here, we have totally different looks that are going on. That's different. That's different. That's different. And according to their um, their magical unicorns, these things are the ones that would probably do the best out of that whole set for um, for the uh, for the like Instagram and Facebook. What do they call that thing? Oh yeah, social media. That's yeah, right. social media. <laughs> I actually found it was really interesting some of the um, the images that it threw up as its its sneak peeks, um, and I'll run through some of mine in a minute. Okay. But um, yeah, no, that's awesome. The the fact that it's going straight through the glasses. I don't think I've tried glasses. I know I've I've had some um, I've had some models in some really weird makeup get up, and it worked really well with it. But um, yeah, I don't think I've tried any glasses as yet. We'll have to throw that one in. Okay, why don't you pop over and let's, let's do something from your neighborhood. Okie dokie. I think you just hit share screen and you'll kick me out. Yeah. Or do I need to stop sharing? No, I'm no, good. You just kicked me right out. That was pretty I just easy. kicked you right out. So um, hopefully you guys can see mine. So um, I've got, um, I've only gone through 5,000 photos. Um, but it's definitely helped me save a few hours, that's for sure. Like I said, I haven't, I'm not really a high um, shoot rate, but I have got various things that um, I have brought in. Um, obviously, when you are dealing with people, um, it will go through and it will definitely pick um, and group everything together. Um, and you can make your thumbnails as big or as small as you want to. Um, and again, same thing. If you click on a group and it's bringing up um, everything else that's similar in that group and it picks the best shot. And I've been pretty much um, really, really happy with what it's done, whether it's got closed eyes or people aren't looking at the camera. And it brings up they That's... zoomed on the faces on all of them and like yes this little one's looking straight at the camera but it's not quite um as 
you know, in focus as some of the others. Um, there's all sorts of various ones. Now, when it comes to the sneak peeks, I just want to go back and see if I can find. So this one was really interesting. So it popped this one up as a sneak peek. Now I'm hoping for whatever reason it's. You Did you click on sneak peeks? There we go. It wasn't coming up. This one um, actually rated really, really well on Instagram, which is kind of funny. Um, whereas this one where you've got the little kid running in, but for whatever reason, when I put them both up on Instagram, I actually got more likes on this one. Isn't that funny? Um, than maybe some of the other ones. This was another one that um, was a shoot that the parents actually ended up falling in love with as well um, and did really well on Instagram. It was just cute and funny and, and everybody sort of loved the, it's not what you would call the ideal perfect portrait, but it was a real shot of a toddler and she was having loads of fun and you can see that in her face. So um, the algorithms that they've got running on this program are picking up that human interaction, especially when it comes to people. So um, that was really kind of interesting. But it went through, it groups everything, um, it puts in closed eyes, blurred photos, um, and you can run as many or as little sneak peeks as you want. On some of them, I put my sneak peeks up quite high. Oh, you've, yeah, um, you've got a lot there. Yeah, because um, I was really sort of playing around and experimenting with this one. So just mucking about with it. Um, now, this is um, the trip we just had last week. So um, I thought it was really kind of interesting um, putting it together and running it through. Um, I didn't have as many highlights. Um, <laughs> closed eye detection, I thought that was really interesting because... Um, the only, <laughs> there's no faces here except for on this particular mural um, that was on the side of a water solo. So I'm not quite sure where it, it picked that up. Um, and the blurred photos, um, which was another, that's not. You know what? Yes. It looks like that Let's it's put them in together. closed eyes and blurred photos Close. ended up the same because it's got the same amount. I'm going to bet. Yeah that those yeah. are the exact same photos. So um, some of these that it's sort of put into the blurb pile probably deserve to be there. <laughs> Let me just say, I'm not a landscape photographer per se, uh, but I do love to have a crack at it. So um, I'm not a professional, but we were doing, um, is it this one? Okay, so I was doing bracketing and, oh, and it, it pulled them together pulled them together in the same folder um come up with this hinky little thing up here which i thought was so cute no key faces found well guess what there's no faces in this shot um but it was pulling the bracketing oops i double clicked too far out pulling the double um those out now there was another one i was trying to find I'm hoping you can see panorama. It grouped them all together. Oh. There was one at the end. It went, oh, I don't like this. And it's actually, even though it's a similar photo, the position of it is out. So it's not actually part of that panorama. So it actually picked it up. Oh, look, I'm, I'm getting excited. <laughs> I was, that was so cool. And I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. Um, in, it didn't pick, look, it didn't pick up every bracketed shot. Um, I'll see if I can find another one. Um, okay, so. okay, so this was a bracket and it missed. So it grabbed that one and it missed, but it did put them in the same folder. So um, even though it's a bracketed shot, I can then come back if I want to, and I can re-rate that as like a five. Um, and this is, so there's, it hasn't quite grouped them together on this one, and I don't know why, but it's hit and miss. So I've got 76, 77, 
and 78 so i can easily go and change all those okay and how did how did you change that to a five so i literally just clicked on it and hit the letter five on my keypad if you want to swap them out say um you can hit if if you've got one um say this one here i don't want this to be green and i want it to be red i can hit s and that will usually it swaps it out oh it's not working today i don't know oh it only goes the other way sorry how's me telling i don't know what i'm doing here um but yeah so if you want to change it to you can go um and change everything so i've got 77 78 79 and i just hit five and i change them all to that when you go back you just need to remember to save your changes um before you expect export your images out so there's been a few that it worked really well on um and some that it didn't do quite so well um here's another one that so it picked up this photo this was another exposure it did put them in the same folder so okay. that does so this is it... this is not the primary run of aftershoot just yet um and it's something that they're working on as we're you know as as we as other photographers are going hey by the way you're doing really good on the wedding stuff and the people stuff what can you do for us with the birds and the and the landscape and they're working on it so um, i'm pretty excited with you know how far it's already come because initially this was really built for the wedding photographer who does you know thousands upon thousands of images at, at a time and they're they're now training it to do other things which is pretty cool now if i can i've just confused it because i've scrolled all the way down to the bottom at a million miles an hour and i've got so many things running at once but um yeah exactly what you were saying it's not designed for non-people but it is doing pretty good with um nature photography so this one here it decided that these two were the best ones and i agree this one here is a little bit on the blurry side um same again this one wasn't quite as crisp as this one was so and that's with animals so it's not picking up that there's a face um, but it is looking for all sorts of things in the image so i was really really impressed running through this stuff um, to how well it worked and if you have um, i mean here's another one this isn't um <laughs> it's got a chicken there this isn't um people like portraits as such but it is, um, has people in it. So it's like a, events and things like that. Um, and it was picking up, um, going through and picking up sneak peeks that it would think would work really well on Instagram. So um, like with this one, this is, it, it sees it as a human interest sort of aspect and that's why it's picking it up. Um, with group photos, why is it not? Where's the group? Where's some group ones? So as a reminder, if anybody, ha if you have a, a specific question that you'd like answered or us, us to play with and see if uh, we can pull it out for you, please uh, use the Q&A and pop in there. And uh, if you're just coming in, um, don't be afraid to stop by the chat and say, hey, I'm from wherever you may be. So, um yeah so i mean it works on on loads of things so um i mean i can probably stop stop playing with that for the moment and i can jump myself out um but yeah so anything that um why can't i jump myself out oh because i'm i'm gonna there we go <laughs> i'm gonna i'm gonna kick you out <laughs> I do i want to continue out. it's gonna take you out so i'm taking you out <laughs> 
Um, yeah, so it's really cool for, for working on loads of stuff. So what else have you got? So bring up some of your, maybe some of your bird shots that you've done. Yeah, that's that's what I'm looking at. And let's see, uh, let's look over here. This was uh, pretty surprising. There's, there's my select. And as you go through, let's see, let's make that a little bigger for you. Um, I was pretty amazed with how well it pulled up, especially the birds in flight and the motion. The fact that these ended up in the selects was pretty amazing because there's movement there. Um, and they were definitely ones that I wanted to play with. You can kind of get an idea here that it, that it goes through. And I don't usually go for a lot of sneak peeks. And the reason I, I don't go for a lot of sneak peeks is because, hey, let's see how good it does. And I thought it did a, a really nice job. This one, this one, this one, and this one are all different. You know, this guy over here, maybe not so much. Um, but I'm, you know, going to start working on training things. So I would change the stars and start moving it. I, I didn't want to start training things until I really understood how the program is working as I watched a lot of different files. Um, but when you double click on one of these, I mean, you know, we are in nice, nice focus there. Now, just be aware that my screen resolution is um, really low in order for you guys to be able to see this at a bigger size. So um, they may look a little soft, but these guys are uh, pretty, pretty sharp where that goes. And if you look, we got this whole site sequence again, like like Julie was just saying, you see how it, it kind of said, hey, these guys all live together, don't they? So, um, so that's always a good, a good sign. The other thing is because sometimes I want to do something weird with my, my blurred photos because I'm shooting them more for motion and for art. Um, this is pretty cool because now I can go right in and say, okay, where's my blurred stuff? Oh, okay. There's a, is there enough going on there? Yeah, but it is, it is blurred. These were definitely, um, you know, a lot softer than the other ones I was just showing you. And you can, again, using your um, arrow keys, you can scroll through. So if I wanted to change this to a three, all I need to do is slide it through. Change the stars. Hello. No. Oh, yeah. Duh. Right there. <laughs> Duh. and it's no longer a two so it moved moved it around um and you can use the the numbers on your keypad too right oh i just did a five okay so you get the idea we can um play with things so let's go back to here um so you can see all your images so you see that we have a folder which which is all your images and then there's your breakdown so um so once you bring them if you were in the case of using Lightroom or whatever, and you, you've already done your kind of your checking of the call, um, you can go back through and say, okay, you know what? You guys were right. The blurred ones were all blurred. You know what? I just want these 67 photos um, exported. I'll save my changes first. Yep. Um, you can export whatever number of photos you want. So the photos that I want to do is your selected plus your sneak peeks. So just be aware, seven and nine is 16. So these are not, these are different photos than are in the selected files, but they're, they're, ver they're hyper-selected. So just be aware that you know that. And then once you've cleared your blurred files or your blurred uh, images, then you can just say export the 66 images and then it will move it into Lightroom or Capture One or whatever your thing is. In my case, um, where I would, what I would do is I would export and just put them into a new folder in, uh, on my computer and you can, you know, put them anywhere you want. So whatever file system you're using will allow you to set up that way. Let's see. Have we got another one to share? This was pretty cool. I think, oh, um, again, back to, back to sound bites. When we go back, back to here, <clears throat> If you notice, there's plus 10. Why is there plus 10? Because when I run through the 10, the nice part is, look at how, 
I get that quick view of the face so I can go, yeah, do I like that expression? Oh, that's a good expression. So I, I already know I like the pose. So I'm now going in and saying, okay, no, that's a little squinty. That's a little squinty. That's a little squint. Okay, so you can just kind of buzz through them real quick. And eh, I don't like that one for sure. Okay, eh, that one's got a got a nice movement to it. But the you know you can see that the expression is nice to go with the body. You know the totally different body posture. So you know being able to ha have this little guy pop up here is really handy when you're when you're working your people photos for sure. Yeah. The other really cool thing is um, just you've got your um, tutorials that are built straight into it. So if you got a question or um, something like that, you can go in, you can have a little look at some of the tutorials directly from there. Um, and there's always the um, support too. So anytime you want to ask the guys some questions and they're super quick, super, super quick for getting back to you. So, um, yeah, that was fabulous. So here's, you know, here's your, you know, quick answers. Your frequently asked questions are right here on the screen. Here's your setup for your tutorials. And I got to that just by clicking on the tutorials button. Um, when you go to preferences, this will enable you to really fine tune this to exactly if you have a full color system for your files and folders and and everything you can go through and say okay in my loop view you can set up your own shortcuts and um just there's i mean I, it's over my head for doing stuff like that i usually like to work with something for a long time before i start changing things so if somebody comes in behind me and wants to use the same software they're not like how come when I do that, it doesn't work my way anymore? I, I've had that problem in Photoshop a lot because I teach that. <laughs> uh, I actually haven't changed anything really much in my preferences. I'm pretty happy with everything the way it's set up. It's pretty intuitive the way that it's all, all run. So, yeah. Okay. So when, once you hit the support button, you'll get right here. Hey there, welcome to Aftershoot. Take a quick look around. If you have any questions, just re hit reply to this message. And then you put in your thing, write your reply. And really, these guys are pretty darn quick in getting back to you. Um, which I was, pre I, you know, I always like good customer service, but this was like above and beyond. And yeah. it's not just because they don't know that it's me. So no. <laughs> it wasn't it wasn't like it's oh well Bob is doing some after shoot stuff for us and he's doing a webinar so we need to spend more time with him or get to him quick. They um, as long as they're there they are um, on it like uh, really quick. Yeah. I was gonna yep. say something else but I shouldn't. Uh, <laughs> let's see what it's else. It's a kid's show. Got? No. <laughs> okay. So you can also if you again if you're doing a big 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 pile so I haven't changed this either I'm using a moderate system uh, resources to cull so you can be doing other things while this is culling um, if you really have a big pile you can move up to high and have it really you know use everything and just go away so it can do those you know those four or five thousand images for you and do it quick. But then you can also say, you know what, I want to be doing some other stuff so I can set it down to low. Um, I've, I've not run into any problems using Medium, so no, it's, it's fast no, enough for me. Yeah. Um, where is my, I got a, uh, let me just grab something over here. Why are you there? Go away. Uh, after shoot, after shoot. I just wanted to show you. Oh, there it is. All right. So, no, it's oh, there it is back here. Or maybe it's not letting me. Let's see what happens if I bring? Oh, I can't bring it over there. Anyway, I was going to show you the email that they send because I thought it was kind of cool, but I think I have to stop sharing for a moment to get. Yeah, that probably. Action. Yeah. It doesn't like me. Or it's probably, oh, you know what? It's probably behind here. Yeah, if you, it depends on what you're sharing. I was just trying to share a, a, an image of the email. I mean, you know, a, a screenshot of my email. Hmm. All right, well, I'm going to make that go away. Exit after shoot. Sure, why not? You can always <laughs> open it back up. 
All right. The height, the height of technical. <laughs> yeah, that's that's Slimity. why they brought that's why they brought me in. They wanted to show you that um, people who have no idea can make this thing work too. Totally, totally. Because uh, we're yeah, weirdly, because that's true. I am really you know as much as I work on computers and as much as I help people in Photoshop and stuff, I'm not really a computer and an app kind of guy. And I've been able to make this work really well. And that's that's the thing that, that I like is they've, okay, I, for want of a better word, I'm going to say they've dumbed this down so that if you go in and play with it for just a little while, you'll be, you'll be right it, in there. It takes next to no time to figure out how to use it. I, I, I mean, being a, a writer for Photo Focus, you know, I'm like, oh, can you write something on this software? Can you write something on this software? And I open it and I sit there for half an hour going, um, sure. Now, what button do I press? Um, but this was just open it and it just works. It was um, it was a joy to learn how to use and it's a joy to use to use it all the time. I've never used a culling program before. I know there are cu other culling programs out there. Um, but I've never used one before, but I'm just, honestly, just, just a couple of shoots in on this and I was totally addicted to running everything through it. Um, and you can run old stuff through it too. You don't have to use it as a pre-processor or a pre-sorter before you start processing. Um, but there is, um, and I'll have to find it. I've got it here somewhere. There's a link and I can put this in the chat. Um, so this is from um, the folks at Aftershoot because um, people asked us last time, there is different workflows that you can use um, with Lightroom and that. So you can bring your photos directly into Aftershoot and then export into Lightroom. But if you have got them in Lightroom and you want to recull them, you can do that. But there are steps that you do have to take. I haven't done that yet. Um, but I did put a little link up there that I got um, off the people at Aftershoot um, on how to do that. So, and they've got some really good resources on their website too. So if you um, punch in a question, you want to know how do you do this or what do you do with that, they've got some awesome stuff on their website. And of course, you can um, give them a shout out to come and help you if you do get stuck or if you have a question. Um, one of the other questions we got asked last time and I jumped on the little um, help thing for the folks at Aftershoot and they tell me that you can actually run this on multiple devices. So if you've got, for instance, I've got a studio PC so I can run it on that and my home PC. Okay, there is one caveat to go with that. Because oh, uh, I yes, I went. I asked about that um, specifically uh, again because of the question that popped up in our last webinar. Mm. Um, you can download it and use it on multiple machines under the single license. The problem is that you won't be able to see the images, the call on the different machines. They will not. They won't cross pollinate. All right. Yep. So you can you can do them on this machine and you can do them on that machine, but they live they on each machine. It won't be like they're popped in. Although, if you upload and and export your images to your other folders, then you'll have access to that yep. cull. But the actual aftershoot window will not have both sets. Ah, family just found this out the other day when we got back from our trip. I haven't had a chance to even get out in the studio yet, so that's good to know um but yeah so but just about everything else they've they've pretty much got covered and let's see i have one more shoot to share which i thought was pretty interesting you know back to that wildlife stuff oh you know i was going to say this just doesn't look very good you know why i was shooting in the fog <laughs> <laughs> so as you as you go through but strangely enough even though i'm shooting in the fog these were the images that i was looking for and within within the image it actually is and this is why i thought i'd bring this one back up it is sharp within the fog <laughs> That's cool. because i th i thought these would all end up in the blurred pile and i was actually pleasantly surprised 
that the things that I was shooting for came up and popped up really well. And you can see it gets a little, you know, gets a little bit quicker and easier. Um, but you can see that, uh, let's see, plus one, plus one, let's see what's there. But nice there, nice there, okay. And you notice it took the one that's got the head a little bit closer to the camera and the back of the head is the one that has said, mm, I don't think so. Um, I found and I'm... the same thing with the kangaroos. If the head was turned and you couldn't see it, it was putting it in the discard pile, basically. So even though it's not a face, it's looking for those faces. Yeah, and it's, it's, uh, it's pretty amazing stuff. Uh, let's go back here. Let's see what they did for sneak peeks here. So, and and look, so I had a, a full day of shooting. So we went from morning to night and it covered, you know, from the super, super foggy to a in flight to, um, it got a little bit more detailed, got an individual portrait, got, you know, there and then went off when it was in the night. Those are totally different, but it kind of just pulled them all, you know, out. And that would have been pretty close to my, to my run. And when I went into the blurred ones where I, you know, cause I looked at these a little bit, a uh, little bit tighter. And even though it was foggy, there was movement and some blur. So it's not perfect yet, but I see this little bad boy getting better and better every time I work with it. So anyhow, I just thought I'd share that one last little thing because it was so different. I never thought it would see into the fog. Go figure. Thanks for being with us this morning and um, hopefully you've um, picked up a little bit. If you want to try um, after shoot, we really do thoroughly recommend that you um, go and at least get the free version um, and you would be really, really impressed, um, I'm sure, just like Bob and I have been. So. Um, We've had a ball using the product and we've had probably way too much fun doing these webinars, I think. <laughs> All right. All right. So thank you, everybody. And um, that pr pretty much brings us up on the hour. All right. Have a great day from Sedona. And have a brilliant day from Australia. See you guys.